about 45 million people suffer from coronary artery disease. According to the current estimates, India will soon have the highest number of cases of cardiovascular disease in the world. It is estimated to account for 36% deaths by the year 2030. This year, the theme on World Heart Day was creating heart healthy environment. Coronary artery disease or heart attack is caused by poor blood flow to the heart muscles. More and more young Indians suffer from coronary artery disease owing to their poor lifestyle. Controllable risk factors are diet, physical inactivity and stress. Diabetes and hypertension have increased risk of heart disease. In this episode of Let's Talk Health, experts from Apollo Hospital will tell you how to diagnose, treat and prevent this deadly disease. The fast-paced development in India has led to dramatic lifestyle changes. Not all of them for the better. Our lifestyles have become more sedentary and the consumption of fast food has increased. These are some of the reasons why India is staring at a heart disease epidemic. Cardiovascular diseases is actually the multifactorial. If you look at the cause, there's a number of factors play into the causation of heart disease. It's a combination of both genetic as well as uh, you know, the lifestyle or environmental factors. Somebody who has got uh, genetically prone for a heart disease family history, along with it, they follow a very poor lifestyle, then they get into a heart disease quite early. It's more of a sedentary lifestyle. People are working very hard uh, earlier, manually they're working. And now we are in a situation where people are doing desk-bound jobs and absolutely sedentary lifestyle. Uh, this transition to a sedentary lifestyle has caused this uh, increase in the incidence of heart disease. The signs and symptoms of coronary heart disease may differ from people to people. Some people have a silent heart disease with no prominent symptoms. However, these are the most common symptoms of a coronary heart disease. Angina is chest pain or discomfort that occurs when the heart muscle doesn't get enough oxygen rich blood. It can trigger pain in the neck, jaw, throat and lead to upper body discomfort. Heart disease is often very silent in the beginning and the first symptom can sometimes be sudden death in 50% of the patients. So they have to, whenever someone has risk factors, they will have to go proactively and go to evaluate and go for health checks and identify early. So someone, we have a lot of uh, predictive score models where we can put in all the scores of the risks of the patient and identify the next 10 year risk of having heart disease. Even otherwise, someone has a family history of heart disease and if they smoke or are diabetic, then they are prone for a higher risk for heart disease. So someone who, who has to uh, regularly get checked and keep uh, his diabetes under control and take care of his lifestyle. The need of the hour is to identify and closely monitor the onset of the disease. Encountering the disease with timely medical intervention is the best way forward in treating heart ailments. Somebody who comes with a heart attack, uh, we have a, a door to balloon time of uh, about 30 minutes, which means from the time the patient comes with a heart attack, within 30 minutes, we take him to the cath lab, open up the blood vessel, and the blood vessel is uh, flowing. And uh, if they come very early, and then the patient just actually uh, goes home with a normal heart. So it's very important. As soon as the patient reaches, we have a system in place. The STEMI care is perfectly placed. The patient immediately, the emergency doctor attends, and the cath lab is activated, and we are informed. And the lab is ready 24 hours. So a patient comes in and uh, gets the treatment on time and goes back with a, almost a normal heart. So the challenge is getting the patient on time. In this episode, we bring to you the personal accounts of two cardiac patients who underwent successful heart procedures to lead a meaningful life. Manisha Kartha was in her late 40s when she started facing difficulty in breathing while walking short distances. When her discomfort increased, she knew there was something amiss with her health. When I was walking with my daughter sometime in the market or somewhere, 
Recently, I found myself lagging behind. She is walking, and sometimes my husband also told that why he is walking so slowly. So the speed came down, and uh, I couldn't understand. It's like after eating uh, meal, heavy, not heavy meal. I would say normal meal. I I felt that uh, that uh, breathing trouble is coming. It's like it's very very difficult breathing after having a heavy meal. So that was the initial stage when I I. I started thinking that okay maybe something is going wrong somewhere. One night it became very difficult. It was I was not able to breathe at all. There was a pain inside, and I I didn't understand where the pain is coming actually. It was all over my back, my chest heaviness, and as if somebody is strangling me. Before the chest pain grew in intensity and frequency, this IT professional consulted a cardiologist to rule out any heart ailment. And effectively, a young lady, uh, 49 years old. Uh, when we look at 49-year-old lady, the chance of having heart disease is relatively low compared to a male patient. So her suspicion level was a little low. She was not a diabetic, and she was a hypertension, which means she had high blood pressure. This only risk factor she had. So young lady with hypertension, the risk of heart disease are low. But she was complaining of uh, uh, breathlessness and exertion. Uh, she was hardly able to walk with a uh, little swelling of the feet. so she was uh, put into evaluation so we initially did a stress test uh, that which means we make her walk on a uh, treadmill uh, which she couldn't complete she was feeling breathless and couldn't complete the test so we had to send her for a ct scan a 320 ct scan uh, where which uh, showed a block which was quite I was quite su- surprised to see two blocks in one of the two main arteries so that was uh, surprise and hence she was taken up for a coronary angiography uh, and uh, subsequent tests which revealed uh, significant blocks so uh, before that i did not have much idea about what angiogram is going to be i thought it's going to be some cut or something but it was very smooth and uh, no anesthesia nothing i was just, i was given some very uh, mild dosage of uh, uh, tranquilizer I said you need to be relaxed. That is the only condition. And they inserted it uh, from the right hand. It was not much of a painful. I just could uh, and realize something is going inside. After the reports confirmed blockage in two of her arteries, we heard mm-hmm. one of the main arteries is where we had a block. Manisha was advised to undergo an angioplasty immediately. It was her husband's support and assurance that helped Manisha. overcome her fears about the procedure immediately read internet very thoroughly and he found all 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 uh, information and all then he said it's not basically he gave me the strength to face it and he said that okay it is not that difficult lot of people uh, go through it and it's not that painful so he explained the whole thing he has shown it to me and before i went for the angiogram it was uh, I, i was prepared for it mentally i was uh, okay with it it was not too much of worry coronary angioplasty opens the arteries and restores normal blood flow to the heart muscles that become blocked or narrowed from a build up of cholesterol or other substances from fluids called plaque the doctor numbs the skin in the groin area or arm and inserts a needle in the arteries Once the needle is placed a wire is passed through the needle and gently guided to the heart. The needle is withdrawn for a small flexible tube that gives an access to the artery. At this point the patient is given blood thinner to reduce the risk of blood clots. Next a soft flexible catheter is slipped over the wire and threaded up to the heart. The procedure is monitored using an x-ray imaging device. Once the blockages are identified the doctor inserts a wire into the artery and puts an expandable balloon over the wire rapid inflation and deflation of the balloon pushes the vessel walls out reestablishing the blood flow to the arteries the same procedure is repeated for each blockage being treated afterwards the doctor withdraws the deflated balloon and catheter from the arteries her angiogram showed blocks in one of the main vessel the LED and there were blocks in the other artery with the right for the artery so when we have a situation like this we have a standard uh, a chart where we put in her risk her uh, sorry, risk profile her age her disease pattern 
she is not a diabetic which all